Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Sarah Winstead here, bikini athlete and coach for Pro Physique. And today I'm going to take you guys through my glute training day. It is Friday and we are sitting at about 15 days out of Junior Nationals. So very excited for that show. Going to come in really good for that show. I'm going to bring my best physique yet again. I'm already calling it because just because we're manifesting this stuff right now. So, um, and one of the things I want to go over in this video, and I'll probably do it after my training session is kind of what, you know, how I've been trying to maintain as much muscle mass as possible during this contest prep. And, you know, I'm going to give you some advice, some tips, some tricks, everything like that to help you guys maintain muscle mass while you're dieting, because that's kind of, that's really the goal. You know, it's very difficult unless you are a brand new, brand new to the gym or have taken a significant amount of time away from the gym, like a few years. It's very difficult to actually build muscle mass while you're in a calorie deficit and while you're dieting. And so I'm going to take you through through my glute training day and show you a little bit about and talk a little bit about what I've shifted over the last few weeks because my feedback was to come in a little bit fuller and denser in the glutes. That means I've added back in um, a lot more weight, even though, yes, we are pushing right now. I'm trying to push as even heavier than I have been over the past couple of months. And so that's one of the biggest differences. But again, I'll go through all of that when I go through my training and then I'll hop back in and explain more about how to maintain muscle mass while you're dieting because that's one thing we do not want to lose because once we peel back the layers of body fat we want to reveal that shape you want to reveal that look and that density to your body too and kind of just feel really good about how your physique looks aesthetically and also you know, maintain as much strength as you possibly can in the gym because as we diet down, strength starts to decline as well as recovery. And so, you know, I'll give you some more information on that as well later on in the video. But I'm finishing up my core nutritionals, core fury, and core pump. And we're gonna head into crunch. They just opened. It is 5 a.m. So let the let's get this a glute day rolling. First exercise of the day is hip thrust. Now I've moved the hip thrust to the first exercise of my training plan, compound movement first, going hard, going heavy. This is a change from what I was doing a little bit earlier in my contest prep. Going heavy, going hard, focusing on that mind muscle connection. But you'll notice even though I am going very heavy, I'm not slinging the weight around. I'm controlling the weight, controlling the reps trying to really fire that mind muscle connection up. And I found that a band around my knees helps me push my knees out more just to get that even more of that glute activation. Glutes are most activated in this movement at the very top. That's why I like to hold the top. You'll see me, you know, at least one second or so in this movement. I'm doing three working sets of this with two really good warm up sets of this. And you'll notice pretty darn tired after every single set. Next exercise is goblet squats. Again, another compound movement that I moved to the beginning of my training plan. Going heavy, going hard, but still focusing on that form, that intensity overall. Still focusing again on firing more of the lower glutes in this movement. That's why you see my stance a little bit closer together and I'm not extending my hips out super, super wide and I am not also standing up completely straight at the end. I get the most activation personally when I do not stand up all the way straight at the end and I keep that upper back a little bit more rounded and really get that squeeze there at the top. Now that compounds are done, I'm moving into my accessories. First one up is seated abduction machine. Now I do this in a three-way fashion. You'll notice this first way, I am sitting all the way up straight, pushing my hips into the back of the pad and looking up as well. I find that this gets a lot of that upper, upper glute, upper outer glute even more so in this movement. And I'm focusing on pushing my knees outward. Um, and then of course you'll see that my feet are still at like a 90 degree angle for this. I'm short, so I can't like put my feet all the way down the pegs. The second way I do this is sitting up completely straight to keep my core nice and tight, but still focusing on the much of a range of motion as I possibly can. 
going hard, going heavy. You'll find that this, the, doing the three-way, the burn will definitely travel around the upper glute. You'll feel this in kind of three different areas. Now, last variation, leaning forward. I touch my glutes for this one because I really want to feel it in the upper glutes. I also sometimes will feel this kind of in my lower inner glutes as well. So it's it's kind of a nice way to end this. And you'll notice pushing hard, making the face, challenging myself, and really, really giving it my all every single set. Three sets here, and then we move on to the next one. Now it's lower glute focus time. I really like these. I call them like eccentric step lowers. I don't even know what to call them, honestly. Um, I really focus on sitting on my heel, pushing that hip back, activating that lower glute, and going heavy. I'm thinking I'm holding here like a 30 pound weight. I start with my left side first. My left side is one, my posing side, and two, my weaker side. And so I'll complete all of the reps that I possibly can on that side. Then I will switch sides to my right leg. Ooh, it's 35 pounds. Sweet. <laughs> And then I'll match the reps on the right side to make sure I am staying balanced, especially with single leg movements. If you do have a lacking side, which we normally do, um, I like starting with that side first to get the most bang for my buck. And then, of course, match the reps, making the face, going heavy, really trying to feel that in that lower glute area by not standing all the way up again as well. Last exercise, single leg glute kickbacks. Again, I will be touching my upper glute for that activation. I found personally for me, and you can play with this now, um, is that putting the cable attachment right below my knee and standing up mostly straight gets me the most activation in my upper glutes. Now, you can try this leaning forward. You can try the attachment being at your ankle. Do what works for you, but play with this and make sure what I found a lot of times with clients is that they do not keep their hips square. That's why I'm hanging on to the actual apparatus here to make sure my hips stay square because if we're turning and rotating, we may not be getting the most bang for our buck as far as the optimal activation of the glutes in this movement. By now I am very tired. This is very heavy for me, right around 40 pounds or so. And after this, I am like D-U-N done. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that glute training day and breakdown voiceover of going through all of my current glute training. And I did switch this up after Gene USA's and we've been on this plan for a couple of weeks now. And I've definitely seen some improvements in the fullness and density of my glutes, especially in my back pose. And so, you know, that leads me to believe that it's working as far as like seeing the results in photos and especially this deep into contest prep or even a dieting phase, relying on progress photos is extremely important to make sure that you're still seeing that nice density, that nice fullness. Obviously, when you are very deep into any sort of dieting, cutting phase or contest prep, you know, carbohydrates do get a lot lower, calories get a lot lower, so that pump in the gym may be a little bit less. And so, you know, prioritizing things like compound movements first, which is what I have switched to, as well as going heavy as possible. Um, in between Girl Power and Gene USA's, I did not do the best job of going heavy as possible. I will definitely admit that just because we had to really push. I got like one or two days of higher food and then we were right back down again because we had you know, a really, really not a lot of time in between shows and we were kind of on a crunch time and my, and my feedback was leaner. It wasn't fuller at that time. And so this is how you kind of adjust your training schedule is how you adjust your mindset and how you kind of attack contest prep from show to show based upon your feedback. And if you want me to go over more about judges feedback, implementing feedback and things like that, comment below. I'd be happy to do a separate video on that kind of stuff. But maintaining muscle mass. The longer you diet, the harder it gets to maintain muscle mass. You're not just losing body fat straight off like peeling back the layers. Most of the what the weight on the scale that you're losing and especially off that waistline is body fat. But we can't just lose body fat independently of water or muscle mass or anything like that. And so at a certain point, strength is going to decline, recovery is going to decline. And so taking those two things into account and Making sure you're prioritizing things like still embracing your rest day when you do get it. Obviously, I'm doing cardio on my rest day, but I'm not training on my rest. I'm still taking my two rest days per week, and my body is really enjoying that little break from training. Um, and then, of course, you know, prioritizing things like mobility work 
I'm still doing that at least once a week, if only on like my hips because of the cardio right now. Um, I'm prioritizing that because I don't want my hips to get way too tight because then my glutes will not activate. And then I can't, again, activate my muscle connection. It's not going to fire. And so I'm not going to, if you don't use it, you'll lose it as far as that kind of stuff goes in terms of muscle mass. Um, Another good tip for maintaining muscle mass along with keeping things heavy and training intensely as you possibly, possibly can um, is going to be em embracing things like diet breaks and refeeds as far as like, hey, you know, we have opportunities where we can definitely take some stress off the body temporarily, physiologically and psychologically. And I love training glutes um, on a refeed day or after a refeed day because I get a really good pump. The muscle bellies fill back up with glycogen. You, you see some great lines, some great shapes and greatness, and you can push even harder in those sessions. So take advantage of those if you are deep into a contest prep and a dieting phase to make sure you take, again, temporarily take some stress off the body as far as that stuff is concerned. You'll notice my exercise order did change. I mentioned this in the voiceover as far as like, I put my compounds now first in my training to get the most optimal activation, and most optimal firing of my glutes. I used to, in improvement season, have a couple of activation exercises like single legs um, or like upper or lower glute focus exercises before I put in my compound of hip thrust and goblet squats and things like that. That has changed just because energy levels have shifted. I now, you know, I do tend to run out of energy um, as I get, you know, deeper into my session and things like that. Because again, carbs are just not as high as they used to be in my improvement season. That's a reality of contest prep and that's a reality of any dieting phase. So that's why I put compound movements first in my training plan. And I've seen some good success with that so far, as far as like feeling the blood flow, feeling the blood pumping. By the time, as you notice, I got to the end of my workout, I was just gassed. You know, I was trying to get every single fiber to activate that I possibly, possibly, possibly could. So those are kind of my tips as far as like training plan, training implementation, intensity, um, mobility work, embracing rest days, diet breaks and refeeds. And the last tip is gonna be about still timing your carbohydrates pre and post training. I still have half my carbs for the day between my pre-workout snack and post-workout meal. Now again, not a lot, but it's some. It's anything and everything can really help. And I still combine that with a little bit of protein, water, and salt. That'll give me the most amount of bang for my buck as far as a pump in the gym is concerned. And then that recovery afterwards to start to refill the muscle bellies as well. And so hope you guys found this helpful. Comment below any questions you may have about maintaining muscle mass during a dieting phase. It's the one thing that you can really, really do for yourself as far as like, again, when we diet down, we want to make sure we have that shape. We have that density. We have that tone and that look that we really want to see rather than if we just deplete way too quickly or cut calories way too quickly or do way too much cardio way too quickly, you're going to end up looking like what I call like a limp noodle or, you know, just like that flat and not like filled out. You're going to lose muscle mass. You're going to lose strength very, very quickly. So I encourage you guys, if you are in a dieting phase, make sure you are stair stepping down calories, upticking cardio in a manner that you find sustainable. Get in, get out of the fat loss phase and get on with life. So Comment below any questions that you guys may have for me. Um, I'll put my link to coaching as well in the description box. I am taking on new clients as far as competitors as well as lifestyle clients. Come and join the Pro Physique Fun. <laughs> and I will catch you guys in the next video.